so this is the uh, second set of notes related to chapter five. So in the first set of notes, um, we talked about um, residual properties. So the second set of very brief notes, we will talk about um, reference states. Okay. So let me close this. Okay, and so it's a it's a rather short set, but um, all is good. Okay, so in terms of reference states, so if I think about to the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics was uh, delta U is equal to Q plus W, right? So in terms of the first law, okay, we're looking at computing a change in internal energy. In its differential form, we had DU is equal to del Q plus del W, right? We're relating differences, differential differences in quantities. Second law of thermodynamics due to Clausius, you know, just as the same, right? Del Q was equal to TDS, where again, we're relating differential changes of heat to a differential of entropy. We're relating changes in thermodynamic properties. Okay. So in the world of thermodynamics, uh, there really is no such thing as an absolute quantity, right? There's really no such thing as absolute internal energy, uh, enthalpy, molar Gibbs free energy, uh, and the like, okay? There's no absolute energy. Okay, uh, thermodynamic is a field of differences, right? And we're ultimately interested in calculating differences in properties. Okay, so absolute values aren't important. We're really only interested in computing of relative values. Okay, uh, but for convenience, it's often convenient to work with absolute values, right? And so, if you were to go to the steam tables in the back of the book, you will see that everything is tabulated in what appears to be uh, absolute units. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay. So we'll take enthalpy to be an example. Right? So the enthalpy can be calculated at a given temperature and pressure and also at some reference state T0 and P0 uh, as. Okay? So H is equal to H ideal gas plus my residual enthalpy. So H0, so naught's going to correspond to my reference state at T0 and P0. So H0 is equal to H0 ideal gas plus H0 uh, residual. So here's my actual enthalpy. Um, here's my um, value at some reference temperature and pressure. Okay. So if we were to compute the difference, okay, H minus H naught is the difference in my ideal gas values and my residual values. Okay. So H minus H naught is equal to delta H ideal gas plus H R minus H naught R. Okay. Easy enough. Okay. So what we're going to do next is right. Again, in the thermodynamic world, we're ultimately interested in calculating differences in quantities. Okay, um, absolute quantities are, well, what appear to be absolute quantities are introduced for convenience. Okay, so I'm going to take the left-hand side of this expression, and I essentially want to solve for H, H being the enthalpy at my uh, conditions of interest. So I'm going to bring H naught over to the right-hand side, and I get the H is equal to delta H ideal gas plus HR minus H naught residual plus uh, H naught. Okay, so H then, so delta H ideal gas. Okay, so for an ideal gas, DH ideal gas is just CP dt. Okay, so this would be equal to the integral from T naught to T, CP ideal gas dt. Right, the integral of this would give me H minus H naught. Okay, plus difference in my residual terms plus H naught over here. Okay, so all we did is we, you know, residual properties actual relative to that of an ideal gas. So my enthalpy is residual plus ideal gas. Uh, the value at my reference state is uh, residual plus ideal gas. Computed the difference in the two, solved for H, we get this general expression. Okay, and what we're going to do next is we're going to define our um, reference state in two different ways to allow us to calculate what appear to be absolute quantities. Okay, so convention one. Okay, so convention one, so again, we're referring to this general equation. Okay, convention one is gonna to be to assume that H naught is zero. Okay, so convention one is we assume that H naught is equal to zero. Okay, we define a zero. Okay, so convention one is we define H naught as being equal to zero. So the H would be integral from T naught to T, CP ideal gas dt, plus HR uh, minus H naught. 
Okay, and so the reason for or convenience of doing this is again for an ideal gas, Cp is typically tabulated and represented it as a simple polynomial. So this first term I can readily uh, evaluate, you know, given um, I well, when you define or say that H naught is equal to zero, right? It's H naught is equal to zero at this temperature and pressure, right? So you would you know, specify what that temperature is. So this term could readily be calculated. And then this difference in residual properties, well, we solved that we could readily calculate those from a cubic equation of state, right? So at a given temperature and pressure, I could directly calculate these two terms. Again, in defining that H naught is equal to zero, Right? I'm you know, specifying that my thermodynamic property is equal to zero at some temperature and pressure, so those are known, and I can readily calculate these. Okay? So these can readily be calculated, this can be readily calculated, and so that gives us a way to readily calculate what appears to be uh, an absolute value of H. Okay? And in you know, face, it appears to be an absolute value, but again, we've arbitrarily defined you know, where H naught is defined, or we've arbitrarily stated where H naught is equal to zero, right? And so this is still actually H minus H naught, and we're just taking that H naught to be zero, okay? Uh, the other convention, rather than assuming that H naught is equal to zero, is assume that H naught ideal gas is equal to zero, okay? And so how that simplifies things is, okay, I'm gonna scroll back to here, is, so remember H naught residual is H minus um, H naught of an ideal gas, okay, so we're just assuming that ideal gas term um, is zero, okay, so H naught is H naught ideal gas uh, plus H naught residual, and so that cancellation leads us to H is equal to integral from T naught to T, Cp ideal gas dt plus HR. So again, at a given temperature and pressure, I can readily evaluate this, okay, so we're specifying that my ideal gas enthalpy is equal to zero. Um, enthalpy is only a function of temperature, so we're specifying that it's equal to zero at some t. So I would know what t naught is. So knowing uh, Cp ideal gas then, I could readily calculate this. Right? This also comes back to, you know, if you look in the back of your book, remember um, when you look at those heat capacity tables, typically they're heat capacities of an ideal gas. Right? Now it should make sense in terms of why um, only Cp ideal gas is tabulated. Okay, so if I want to calculate my actual H, so if I think of this as my absolute value, you know, either convention, my first integral is just that of an ideal gas, and then in terms of my residual enthalpy, I can directly calculate that from a cubic equation of state, because that's only going to be dependent on the PVT uh, behavior of my fluid. Cool, right? And so I don't actually need uh, the real heat capacity. So if you were to look in the back of your text at the steam tables, what you'll find is that your steam tables adopts convention one. Okay, so in the front page of your steam tables it'll tell you that at the triple point of water, you know, at t equals 0 0.001 degrees C, um, all of your thermodynamic properties are defined as being equal to zero. All right, and so the steam tables are tabulated assuming convention one where we assume all of our thermodynamic properties are zero at um, 0 0.001 degrees C. Okay, triple point to convenient temperature because it's well defined. Okay. So uh, when you're looking at a steam tables, or not a steam table, it's just tabulated data in general, and it's tabulated in what appears to be absolute quantities, try and make note of what the reference date is. That's very important. Okay, it's important to know what that reference date is used so that if you start to mix data from multiple sources that you're using it correctly. Okay, In terms of convention one, we're defining an absolute zero. So if you take data from two different sources that define their zero in different ways, the differences in your quantities are going to be wrong because they're not taking into account the differences in uh, that reference state. Okay, um, So again, in terms of those residual properties, Right. If you look in section 5.8, um, your book has tabulated expressions for all of those residual properties and how you can calculate them using a cubic equation of state. But if I know the temperature and pressure uh, for my system, I can readily uh, calculate those quantities. Okay, easy enough. Well, and you know, it, you know, again, it, it's easier said than done. Um, 
you know, in theory, you know, the temperature and pressure of your state, you can use that to calculate your molar volume uh, of your state at that given T, that'll give you the upper bound. And then in the text, you know, ultimately what it is, is they have analytic equations uh, worked out for these two, that you could just plug in uh, your T and P. Okay, so again, there's nice analytic equations for these integrals, um, where if you know T and P, you plug them in, along with your critical temperature, pressure, and eccentric factor, and you can compute those. Okay, um, I mentioned the steam tables, so this is just the front page of your steam tables, um, and so the reference state is the saturated liquid at the triple point, so they tell you uh, T naught and P naught, okay, and at the triple point, my thermodynamic uh, properties um, are defined as being equal to zero. Right. Cool. Okay. And so that's uh, standard states. Uh, that's the end of our notes, um, at least so far, for chapter five.